I'm Delphine Hesters. I live in Brussels and I went to the United States as a fellow in sociology at the sociology department of Harvard University. Well, I wanted to go to an American university because uh, of the very different educational system than the one we have here, which is based uh, much more on collective learning, I supposed, and it was true uh, from my experience. Um, so a collective learning process um, in small groups of where all the individuals contribute to the end result, basically through reading together, writing together, discussion. This uh, specific type of education is also embedded in the PhD track. I'm working on a PhD at the Leuven University here. So this collective learning process is also visible in like how the institutions build their, their groups of graduate students which is very pleasant to, to end up in an environment with uh, like colleagues, like a, a small group of engaged colleagues that work on similar topics from similar perspectives. And this is something I was missing here and I went to look there, for there. And something else I witnessed um, here and on like conferences or other events is this uh, tremendous, tremendous energy and strength of coaching that the American professors can have for their for uh, students on all levels, I think, but especially grad students. So it's based on the same principle of like if we share our knowledge and share our thoughts, like both of us can be, can gain. I work as a PhD student here, so I looked for a place to go as a visiting researcher, not to follow another master's course. Um, so I was looking for a specific professor to work with or to go to. So I. I was looking into the literature I'm using for my PhD and ended up um, with the person of Michelle Lamont at Harvard University. And then after quite some preparation, um, I sent her an email asking whether she would be interested in inviting me. What I think is important if you go as a researcher and not just as a student is a very strong match between you as a researcher and the institute you go to. So that's the first thing, not just look at what you yourself are interested in, but also where the match lies with uh, the institute and the people. Um, and the first and obvious person to look at for this match is, of course, the professor, but I think it's also important, or that's the strategy I used, uh, also to look at what the graduate students of this person are doing, because those are the people in the end you will be engaged with and, and interact with, not only the professor, if they have enough time. I was very lucky to have <laughs> all of that. Um, a second thing is also to check uh, what those professors are working on right now because it can go very fast, like they're not anymore probably working on the same research they're working on like 10 years ago when they were preparing the book you read here in Belgium and that inspires you to contact them. And then a third thing I wanted to add is what I already mentioned before, but it's Im that it's important to not only consider what you yourself want to learn, but also what you can contribute to the people in the institute, because you also have to, I consider it more or less in a way as a job application. Like it's not only me, but it's the match that should work. And then I also like more concretely uh, asked advice to some American professors I got to meet before. Um, just advice because they know the system better, they know whether or not we have to communicate a bit differently or not. And they just confirm that writing an email is perfectly fine, <laughs> like even if it's out of the blue. Um, but they advise to be very short and very clear and be clear on what you ask and what you don't ask. And in the don't ask, if you don't ask for money, mention you don't ask for money. Um, but also be clear on what you ask, like do you want to audit a course, do you need an office space or not, do you ju just be clear and precise. And if they don't answer your email the first time, just try again a second time a couple of weeks later, maybe it just ended up in a, like a bulk of emails. But if they don't answer a second time, they told me, then just take the answer as a no, but don't take it personal. Just think about it, for example, in terms of, you know, the match didn't work or whatever. So when I send my email, um, I try to do exactly that in a way, be short, be precise. I've just briefly presented myself, um, mentioned what I would love to follow as courses or audit as courses. And then I added in attachment um, a research note of five to 10 pages and an abstract 
my CV and a biographical note and then two letters of recommendation. And then what I try to do in this very brief note is to, to show some personal style but to be precise and professional. So I was lucky it worked. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and it depends just on the pers other person at the other side. I know, like my professor, for example, I didn't know her in person before. I n had never met her before. Um, but luckily, she's a person who has the habit of having people over from different parts of the world. Some people don't. There were many highlights, but at the same time, you know, this everyday life was this sort of all-time high. It was a, such a very... You know, being at Harvard, Cambridge, Boston, it's such a well-organized, pleasant environment. So it's like studying at a Widener library and then strolling over the Harvard Yard, uh, going to one of these nice, you know, independent coffee places and chat with people, you know, yeah, constantly in this sort of university environment with a lot of international people. You very easily meet up with people, get to know new people. Uh, That's hard to tell. Like I, I went to, to the States uh, for this semester, audited a course, like was able to present my work. Um, I mainly worked on the analysis of my data, but I, I went in a, quite a late phase of my PhD, which means that a lot of parameters are just already set. So it was very good to make my project more articulate, to engage with people doing similar things, to uh, form a working group, what we did with a, with a couple of colleagues to work on our analysis together and discuss what we're doing. But it's not the case that, you know, auditing a course really, like, reformed my uh, theoretical framework, for example. That's, that's also something important if you consider uh, to go, to consider when, you, when exactly in the research process you would want to go. Like, in the very beginning, to really learn about the theories or more towards the end to be able to share and discuss really m much more the methodology and the outcomes of the work, for example. So that's something to consider. In that sense, it probably influenced my work on a, on a level which is not so clear, but I can feel that, it, yeah, that things become or have become much more articulate since then. Just follow your interest and your intuition when you choose for a place or a professor and don't really go for you know, formal things like you know, the level of the institute or how big the name of the professor is. Also because uh, like the bigger the institute, the higher the chance in a way that you, you know, won't be able <laughs> to see the people around all the time or to chit chat with them uh, because they will be busy. But at the same time, also don't be too modest. Like I think we can be quite ambitious in, you know, what we want to reach for, because I think with our Belgian education system, we already have like a broad, good quality level of education before we go into the PhD track. And at the same time, um, in general, PhD students here have, are well funded and have uh, full time employment even at the university. So which makes it possible for us to, to go and not ask for money somewhere else in the institution. So we have a beautiful background and we don't ask for much in a way, just to be around, so to speak, which makes us m possible candidates to, to be a, a good, interesting, pleasant, visiting scholar, I think. So what I mostly retain from my stay in the United States is the inspiration of the genuine generosity and engagement of the people I met there, which gives a, a very pleasant mix of a feeling of strong empowerment and uh, being humble at the same time. So what I vooral herinner of meenem at mijn verblijf in the United States is uh, de inspiratie die je kan putten uit de generositeit en het engagement van de mensen die je daar ontmoet, van collega's en vrienden. Dat geeft zowel een gevoel van, van kracht en engagement bij jezelf, maar ook een gevoel van openheid en, en bescheidenheid, dankbaarheid um, voor de inspiratie die mensen je daar kunnen geven.